Wizards, welcome back. Now, recently I put up a poll asking you what videos you guys want to see next, and either accidentally or on purpose, you managed to have the exact same number of votes for both options. So I just flipped a coin and I picked one. Now, is that true? Well, no, because two of the prisms I want to show you actually haven't released yet. So today we'll be ranking a whole boat ton of red dots I've used to see how they stack up and where you should put your money. Like I think we all know that Aimpoint T2 is a great optic, but it begs the question, is it still worth your money after being almost 20 years old? I've used a whole ton of these optics and insanely, the difference between them you're gonna see is pretty minuscule, even when the difference in price is it's extreme. Of all of these also, I think I only really dislike one of them. And it's not like even the bad one is gonna get you killed in the streets. And I'll show you as we go over it and you can make your own assessments. But first, let's take a moment, thank today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Javelin Concepts. In a world of bulk and excess, Javelin spins gear design on its head to offer a slimline product focus with the Ajax plate carrier and a 556 placard that makes you completely silent in those covert roles. Javelin Concepts is just taking gear design up a level. The Javelin Concepts stuff is just sick and they do all sorts of giveaways also, so make sure to follow them on Instagram and as always use discount code TLDCO if you pick some stuff up over on their website, save a little bit of money. So much love to Javelin. What's next? Oh, biases? I mean, I don't think anybody cares about this part to be completely honest, but uh, let's go over it. Most of these optics I bought even before the channel started or were sent to me when we did a lot more optic reviews in the past. As a human, I'm sure I'm biased in some way, even unconsciously, and it probably doesn't help that I, I like the EOTech primary arms and the Holosun guys but a lot. So I say it every time, don't take what I say or any other YouTuber says as gospel. Do your own research so you can be the most educated consumer possible. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started. Let's go over each optic and then we'll actually rank them. The first one I wanna get started with is actually a great, just mid-tier starter optic that I recommend for just, just about anyone getting their beginnings into firearms, and that's the SIG Romeo 5. Now the Romeo 5 from SIG is simple, but also just owns that cheap, simplistic optic roll. You have basic illuminator control buttons on the top of the unit. They're not great, but they work. The elevation and windage controls are capped with the tool on the side to make adjustments easy when on the range. Unlike the fancy aim point where you need special tools, you can see where some of the cheaper options actually do things better because they just kept things simple. The Romeo 5 also uses a standard T2 mount, so you could connect into whatever aftermarket mounts you could possibly want. Now, would it be kind of funny to see a SIG Romeo 5 on like a $400 Unity mount? Well, well, yeah, I would probably just smile and laugh about it because I'd also know that that optic would work just fine. For the reticle on this guy, you get a two MOA red dot that lasts pretty much forever with the 2023 battery. To be honest, I got this before the channel even started and I've never changed the battery. So this one's been going strong for like five years. Now for image quality, I think it defines mid-tier. It, it looks so-so. There's a slightly bluish tone to the image, but there's not any magnification or edge distortion when you look at the image. The Romeo 5 used to be found for like 80 or 100 bucks, and now it's like 120. And it's definitely one of the cheapest options you can see from, from all the other options we're gonna show today. And it's interesting because it still gives you performance that's perfectly fine being the cheapest one out here. Now, I'm gonna give you passive aiming under night vision as a test, but I, I think YouTube and a bunch of reviewers have really tainted, tainted this whole test and how important it actually is. There is just about a 0 0.0001, probably repeating of course, percent chance that you're gonna be against a near peer adversary with nods, but then you, you, know, you need to passive aim because you still need to make your way over to Walgreens with that near peer adversary everywhere because your grandma needs her inhaler still. Sneaking around a trained and equipped military enemy and having to get within 50 yards of them so you can use passive aiming. It's just, it's just a really silly thing to base any purchases on. From a civilian perspective, I think passive aiming is a stupid thing to even talk about. 
and I just set my red dots to daylight bright so I can use them as a primary aiming reticle with white light. I'm getting on a bit of a tangent here, but what are those guys gonna use as a reticle when they have to flip over to white light? Their red dot in some useless NV setting? Yeah, that would be great, because then you wouldn't be totally screwed with a now invisible reticle. But let's test it for our min-maxers out there on Reddit. Here the Romeo 5's cheaper glass does collapse pretty hard, and you really shouldn't expect to get a lot of image quality when passive aiming through this optic. So if your made up hero scenario has you passive aiming in some sort of societal collapse where you're helping to maintain order, well then yeah, I guess in that situation, this optic won't work. But you're also gonna see even the best optics, passive aiming is at like 50 yards. Adding a whole nother level to why this test in a civilian perspective and outside of military application is pretty stupid. Ignoring the brain damage bits, I think the Romeo 5 is a great pick and I place it solidly in the B tier for being a well-priced starting point for anyone that needs an optic they can grow from. And then when you upgrade, you have another backup scythe you can use on a different platform. I really do hate that the price has kind of crept up over the years, but it does say a lot that I have two or three of these just sitting around for other shooters, other users, and for people to try out too. So this is a great little optic. All right, let's take a look at another one and <laughs> This one sucks. Uh, this is the Vortex Spark. I actually have the original like OG Gen 1 Spark because I would never ever buy another one of these. Designed as Vortex answer to a simple red dot, we again see the same smart elevation and windage caps with the adjustment tool built in. But the brightness controls are placed on the rear with no discernible way to identify the plus from minus without staring at it every time. We also see the use of a AAA battery on the front of the unit. Now, while AAA batteries are pretty common within the household, they've become pretty uncommon in like ARs, optics, and illuminators. Meaning you'd, you'd have to carry around AAA batteries just for your optic when nothing else would really need that. Now, the mount is actually a T2 footprint, but the battery compartment and controls make using standard mounts super confusing and you're mostly locked into this style. For the reticle, we again see a basic 2 MOA dot with that same aim point style housing. Looking at the glass, I do feel like the quality is improved over the Romeo 5, but now the whole image coloration looks, it looks muted, I think. And you now have this stupid laser emitter blocking a good portion of your field of view. The whole thing just feels like if you took the Romeo 5 simplicity and just threw all that in the garbage and then made th this instead. Oh, but now for the super, super important test. You know, that's, that's sarcasm. The passive aiming test. The Spark actually does solve the problems of the Romeo 5 here, and I notice far less issues with passive aiming under nods. The lower two brightness settings also made for an easy to see dot on your way to Walgreens. But with no quick way to swap your illumination back to you know, a white light configuration so you can actually see your optic, why would you do that? Are you just gonna sit there and frantically press the button up when the lights turn on? Now I'm also confused by the price because it's almost double the cost of the Romeo 5 while being, I don't know, a good bit worse. In the end, I placed the Vortex Spark in the D tier. It's probably more solidly D to F. There's no reason to buy this when so many other cheaper options are on the market that don't charge you extra just to be worse than the other options. And I swear the only thing dumber than this footprint is this stupid rubber cover thing. Oh, I, I hate this. All right, we got lots more of these though. Let's do the next one. And for this one, we're gonna do the Primary Arms MD25 Gen 2. I honestly don't think I've ever gotten to show you guys this. I did a review on the Gen 1. <laughs> this is basically exactly the same as that full video if you wanna watch that. But now, Gen 2 has shaked awake. Here from Primary Arms, we see a much larger housing with the 25 millimeter objective window. The front window is also threaded to add in optional kill flashes. We again see smart elevation and windage with the tools built into the caps, and we also have our large rheostat on the side of the housing for adjusting illumination. Now, I will say that this one's a bit tricky because you have this really, really nice large 25 millimeter objective window, but then you also have this really, really huge knob on the side of it. 
they really need to streamline this whole knob setup in Gen 3 for sure. Now though, as I said, the Gen 2 also has shake to wake and uses a 2023 battery, so it'll last you like years and years. Probably a good public service announcement to say you should probably go use your optics if they've lasted you years and years though, and that's because nobody likes to safe queen actually go out and use the stuff that you bought. The MD25 also uses a standard T2 mount, so we can connect in aftermarket setups like this Unity Fast mount. Looking at the reticle, we see some upgrades with the ACSS CQB dot to give you a quick ranging ring along with reference dots for various calibers. Like with 5.56, it's marked all the way out to 600. At 1x though, those markers are, uh, they're a little bit useless. But when you add in a magnifier, suddenly they become extremely useful to engage at those longer ranges. A 2 MOA dot is nice and it's clean, but you're really starting to play a bit of a guessing game when you start to stretch things out outside of your zero distances. I really do think the ACSS reticle is a step up, but it needs to be paired with a magnifier. So if you're not planning to use a magnifier with your setup, just save some money and get one of the other options with just a standard 2 MOA dot. Now, looking at glass, we do see a fairly noticeable blue-green tint in the glass, and what appears to be a very, very small increase in magnification as we look through the optic. Interestingly, I didn't ever notice that when using the optic normally. I just kind of wanted to highlight to you all that I did see it when I started to look at it a lot more critically and really kind of assessing all the individual bits. Then I did see that part, but before yesterday, uh, no. For price too, uh, I believe this goes for about $200. You can also catch it on sale. But for you know the mount that you get, the larger housing and the upgraded reticle, I do think you're getting a pretty good deal at that price range. You guys ready for passive aiming performance though? Oh, I know it's important. Now, I'll be honest. I thought the MD25 would do great under nods with the larger view but that was not the case. Passive aiming was pretty poor and had some of the worst passive aiming performance alongside the Romeo 5. Interestingly, for passive aiming, I do actually really like the large rheostat because I could just grab it and crank on it to flip to a visible reticle if I were to switch over to white light. Overall, I felt like primary arms took the red dot concept and improved on it. And that gave the MD25 Gen 2 a solid B with its great reticle, shake to wake, and a large viewing window. The glass quality and the big huge knob on the side kind of held it back from a higher rating, but I thought the reticle was a pretty nice increase from just a standard 2 MOA dot, so I did give it some bonus points for that. All right, next we have, ooh, this is a good one. This is the legendary Aimpoint T2. I know everybody out there is thinking it's such a mystery if this one's any good or not. The T2 uses an absolutely bomb-proof and proven housing to outlast pretty much everything. Now though, the front caps are borderline useless and the elevation and windage should be upgraded like mine to not use the horrible European design it comes with. For the brightness adjustment, the T2 uses a large rheostat to control illumination that basically lasts forever on one battery. Now though, you can also get an aftermarket battery cap to hold an extra battery that you'll never need. Knight's Armament also makes a battery cap if you wanna pair this optic with a skateboard <laughs> on Instagram. Otherwise, that cap is probably not needed. Now the mount of the T2 defined a standard and you have a billion aftermarket options. Glass clarity is a chef kiss of perfection now, while scrutinizing the image in this footage shows a slight tint, in reality, the image is so good, you just assume there's no glass in the unit at all. The two MOA dot is a bit simplistic for such an expensive housing, but the dot is clean, bright, and crisp. Now though, we gotta get to the garbage about this optic. It's like $900 without a mount. It's basically the same price as it was like 17 years ago because Aimpoint doesn't want to lose out on any of that sweet, sweet tax money we pay for those yummy, yummy government contracts. So I don't know if you've been catching on to this, but they've been harvesting the field behind me and the truck gets getting closer and closer and louder and louder. So let's just transition inside and go downstairs. Ah, okay. It's much quieter down here. So yeah, where were we? 
Now, moving to passive aiming performance, it does well, but the housing itself is so small that I don't feel like it shines or dominates this category in any way. It does better than others, but ultimately lands itself kind of in the middle of the pack here. $900 for so-so passive aiming performance, even if we're just making fun of that you know, throughout this whole video, uh, that still isn't great. Even with all those downsides, the Aimpoint T2 is S tier as it has defined an optics revolution, even if the T2 itself is getting left behind. But I do wanna say that the S ranking is based more on durability and lineage and not really on features. <laughs> I really just wanted to give it A tier, but I think a lot of people out there would hurt me. It's just that time has not been super kind to the T2 when it's the same price as it was like almost two decades ago. Like buying this would be the same as paying full price, like $600 for a PlayStation 3 in 2024. Kind of a silly thing when you actually put it in numbers. Is it still fantastic for what it is? Yes. Is this, if you guys haven't noticed, is this also on my Airsoft? Yes. Is that my favorite part? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, yes. I mean, I've never gotten to play with it, but hopefully I'll, hopefully I'll get to go with some of the Nocturne guys. That would be super fun. All right, though, let's keep this going. And the next one we're gonna do is the Holosun 510C. For the Holosun offering, we see a deviation in design to a more open style with an integrated solar panel along with an entirely different footprint. For the elevation and windage, the large knobs are gone and we instead see a design similar to more modern pistol optics. Without a special tool, these can be quite a bit of a pain. I mean, you can jam your fingernail in there, but if you're trying to make fine adjustments out in the field without the tool, it's definitely gonna be a challenge. Similarly, the battery tray also requires a tool to open, but thankfully the integrated solar panel means even if you were to be in a jam, you'd still have an optic as long as you're not out in the dark. The footprint is interesting as it uses a more low profile quick disconnect instead of the T2 footprint on pretty much everything else. Now this can be a huge pro or con, and I think it sways the ranking pretty massively. It's certainly harder for this optic footprint to get higher in like a night vision or CQB setup if you wanted to do that. But it's also fantastic in how low it sits for those weapons where you want to have that lower profile, like on a shotgun or like on a PCC, like on this Trybog, where the stock actually sits a good bit lower and then it all just works <laughs> like works like magic. The illumination controls are on the side of the unit with teeny tiny buttons that feel annoyingly identical to the touch. Meaning you definitely have to like stare at it to try and figure out what is what every time you want to use it. And no, I certainly didn't memorize where all the different buttons were on all these different random red dots. They're all over the place. It's all different everywhere. For optics, you have a nice bright viewing window with a similar bluish tint that we saw on the MD25. I'm actually assuming it's the same glass because we also see that very, very slight magnification in the image. Much like the MD25 though, I never really noticed it with all the rounds I put through it and only really saw the difference in tint and that very slight magnification difference when I started to really nitpick and compare all these red dots. So are you as the average consumer really gonna notice these things that we're like hyper focusing on? Probably no. Do they make any difference as to how this optic or the MD25 performs out on the range? Also no. On the reticle side, the 510C has a multi-reticle option where you can have just the dot, just the circle or the standard circle and dot configuration. Now with the 510C having the solar and the fancy reticles, you do see a bit of a jump in price to like $330. I think it's like round about where I saw that, but you're still at less than half the price of a T2 with this setup. But you are at like, I think it's like <laughs> three Romeo fives at this point. Oh man, I almost forgot the most important test. Ooh, super important. Passive aiming test. Here I'll say that actually the 510C does a surprisingly good job at passive aiming. I was pretty impressed by how well it did compared to the other units and really felt like the 510C was only beaten slightly by the EOTech in this category. In reality, if you're using both eyes, like if you have dual nods, 
and not focusing on just the image out of one lens, your brain makes a lot of sense of it. And you really don't even notice the image degradation at all when you're passive aiming with this. Overall, I placed the Hollow Sun 510C in A tier. The multi reticle, solar panel, and QD all make for nice upgrades, but it's held back by the glass being slightly off and the challenges while mounting the 510C on anything besides very specific stock configurations where you need extremely low mounts. I will say on a standard AR, it's probably a C tier because of the challenges you're gonna have if you wanna change some of those mount heights. But when you do things correctly and, and have it on the right setup, like a PCC or like a shotgun, it's definitely in that A to S tier because it, it just works magically well. The 510C is a hard one to recommend and rank though, without knowing like exactly what platform you're gonna be putting it on. I continually came back to just loving this compact setup in a night vision configuration with that low profile optic though. So yeah, mission and platform may make this ranking list completely useless too though. All right, which one's next? Ooh, we got a fun one next with the EOTech EXPS3. Looking at the EOTech, we see a Call of Duty favorite with this easily recognizable housing. We have a front battery compartment that houses our CR123A battery, along with illumination push buttons on the side. Now, I think historically EOTech isn't known for battery life, but I gotta give credit where credit is due because I just turn off my optic when it's not in use. And I've not changed out my battery even with a ton of different videos and optics testing and training that we've done. So I've actually been pretty pleased with the battery life of this. Along the side of the housing is also a night vision mode to quickly swap from night vision brightness to daytime optic brightness. So if you're passive aiming like a real YouTube hero, you can just flip this button and now you're in daytime optic mode. In practical use though, I pretty much hated it because it feels really similar to the other buttons and I never knew exactly what I was pressing, particularly in the dark. Like I said, I just left it in like daytime brightness mode and then used that whenever I needed to transition over to white light. I mean, it's super practical to be passive aiming than have to reach over and click a bunch of buttons before being able to aim at anything. You know, I think I've probably kicked the passive aiming horse to death at this point in the video. The EOTech also uses a QD mount similar to the 510C and the different various models come in different heights with the XPS at your co-witness and EXPS at your lower one third. Now, I don't entirely understand why, but risers, just to bring this up, well, yeah, they're like the cost of two Romeo 5s. Or like five Romeo 5s if you go the Goobers group route. I don't recommend that. I just want you to know that finding the risers to adapt to EOTech to bring it up in height are easy to find, but it could, well, it'll probably be a tough pill to swallow in terms of cost. Looking at optics, the window is large and gives you pretty much a perfect one-to-one -one in terms of colors without distorting the image in any way. From an optics quality standpoint, the EOTech wins over pretty much everything else. Looking at our reticle, we see the standard EOTech circle dot that they're known for. This gives you a large CQB style circle with the center two MOA dot. The reticle shows up a bit differently as it uses a hologram to project the image instead of a standard laser emitter. Do I find the hologram versus the laser emitter makes any sort of difference? No, not really. The EOTech reticle is just interesting as that hologram makes it look like the reticle is always kind of just dancing around. It's very unique. Moving to passive aiming, we see some of the best in the business where there is still some light loss, but the transition is fantastic enough to still see some of those distances if we were to really push out to like 100 or 200 yards. Meaning you could definitely pretend to do passive aiming with this with your friends. Sorry, I mean for the totally realistic and serious use cases that you're gonna need that for. I'll say this for the last time though, again, I just leave this set to daytime bright because I found that fiddling with all the settings and doing all that while transitioning from, from night vision to white light, uh, definitely made me have some issues during training to have some drop shots and just some missed shots completely. I'm also starting to think that this video is really just a gripe session about passive aiming that's just disguised as a red dot ranking video. Don't tell anyone, that's, that's actually what it really is. 
Now, as nice as the EOTech is, you're gonna pay for it. As you're in the seven to eight Romeo 5's territory, if you need EOTech level performance, then it's worth it. Otherwise, probably not. And it highlights why I like the Romeo 5 so much. Yeah, I recommend you get an EOTech and put together a crazy setup like I have. But does everything you own need an EOTech? No. Plus the EOTech has a QD on it, so you can just move it between photos so it looks like all your guns have EOTechs on them. Just, just do that. I would never ever do that, right? Ranking the EOTech, I placed the standard version in S tier. The large viewing window with the super crisp image and reticle is just fantastic. Combined with the QD function and staple CR123 battery, and you have a crazy setup on your hands, even with the painful price. Now, I also have the DCR reticle version, and for my uses, I say the DCR is S plus for me, as I have that entire platform configured for CQB use, and the height over bore markers make those adjustments a little bit easier. Outside of CQB applications though, I would say the standard reticle is, is better for most people and I would recommend just use the normal one, don't get the DCR unless you're doing that specific application that you need it for. Both reticles are fantastic, the DCR is just a, a little bit more niche in its application. Now as much as I make fun of it, the passive aiming on the EOTech is just fantastic for those users that really, really do need that capability in like law enforcement and military applications. All right, I'll put this away. We only have one left and I'm just gonna blaze through this one because this video is getting long and I'm getting tired. And I already did a whole ass video on this optic a while ago. And that is the Hollow Sun 503G. Here we go, T2 housing, quick adjustment caps and elevation, 2023 battery that lasts forever, fairly meh top push buttons that I can never sort out what is up and down, along with a T2 footprint that lets you put on just about anything. I got this. For the optic side, we see a great image with the T2 level of image fidelity, no distortion. The reticle is the same ACSS style as our MD25 to give you a quick target circle, center dot, along with the ranging icons. Much like the MD25, the dots are a bit of a mess at 1x and need a solid magnifier to really make those added markings useful. So if you're not looking to pair this with a magnifier, I would look at other optic options. All right, I did that fast. We're ready to ra Oh, damn, so close. I forgot passive aiming. For the passive aiming side, we see the 503G falls a bit short with the coating and smaller housing, giving us a performance just the tiniest bit worse than the Aimpoint T2. Now, I, I did all that work. I looked it up to find the price of this thing and it was originally like $250-ish, but I don't think they actually make this optic anymore. But if you can get a hold of this and you're probably gonna get it used and save even more, even with the original price, I thought it made a good bit of sense and it was definitely worthwhile for the optic and the reticle and all the upgrades when paired with a magnifier to make for a really cool setup. And because of that, I placed the 503G in B tier. With T2 level features and simplicity combined with the multi-reticle system, it makes it great for a setup for a more simplistic option without completely breaking the bank. That's it though, God. All right, that was a lot of optics. I hope this was helpful though to see what I think about different optics and how I use them and kind of how I rank them. I know there's a billion other optics out in the market, so comment down below if there's some other ones you wanna see compared or if there's some optics that you'd rather I take out and do a whole like long form video on just that optic to explain it and use it and do some longer testing on just a very specific product. Just let me know and we could probably make it happen. Stay tuned though as I look into your suggestions and dive into Prism Optics next and see how those perform as we put a few head to head. Thankfully, I don't have any over here, but thankfully for Prisms, I only have like five of those. So we can go into a good bit more detail without the video being like forever and ever long like this one. But I hope this video on red dot optic rankings was useful in your purchasing decisions and gave you some good ideas of some things that would be useful in your weapon systems and maybe where you can spend some money and where you can save some money. I wanna say thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and our YouTube members. You make it possible we can test all these optics, review them all, show them off to you, and show you which ones you know really are of value to you as a consumer. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, add into what I said earlier, what your favorite optics are, and also those ones you wanna see compared in future videos. I wanna hear about it. All right, everyone, wash out. Oh, hey everybody, I was totally actually chasing here. It really is me. I just uh, figured out wall sheet. He totally forgot the AMS, so we'll just, we'll just throw this guy right up here, right where he belongs here in uh, S tier. Yep. Perfect.
I know I pretty much just talked about passive aiming and how much I hate it, but if, if there's somebody out there who is saying to you, oh, but I really need to have really good passive aiming performance, you just, like you don't, you don't say anything, you don't have to do anything, you just, you just fart right in their mouth. Like that's it, you don't, that's it. And it, it is the appropriate response to that statement. Let's take a look at that ranking chart. We make a make a couple changes here. Just just move this guy. Let's move this guy down a little bit. And this like this little sweet guy. Just just put this little little guy right up here. I think that what the heck? Where did the AMS come from? S tier AMS. Oh God! Now the comments. People are gonna be crying all day. Oh, but the China and optics. I'm so excited. Super excited. I bet you it was Jason. I bet you Jason did that. Make sure to get American-made optics um, by Aimpoint. Aimpoint's not in America. If someone says that, also, fart in mouth immediately. All right, you gotta go now. <laughs> Video's over, there's no more funny stuff. We just hang out, it's just me sitting here. Oh, and that guy, as soon as, oh, the cat's outside. As soon as I came inside, he stopped harvesting the field. Like the moment I came inside and set everything up. So, just fantastic day. All right. Dum dums outside. Okay, seriously, you gotta go. <laughs> Bye. Seriously.